So he borrowed a lot from the Jewish Bible in trying to appeal to the Jews of Medina. So he went to Medina and he tried to preach his gospel to the Jews. But the Jews refused to accept him. The Jews said, no, we believe in our Bible. We are Jews. We want to maintain our Bible and we're not going to accept you as the last of the prophets. When he repeatedly tried, tried but failed to recruit them, that's when he turned against them. And that's where he became a military warrior against them. And that's when he started fighting them, killing them, expelling them out of their community. And this is how Islam started spreading. And as Prophet Muhammad took over Medina and later went and conquered Mecca, his own um, uh, city. He started spreading Islam out of Arabia. And for the next 300 years, Islam started spreading all over the continent. And as they spread, they conquered tribes, Jews and Christians, and subjugated them into Islam. And under Islam, Jews and Christians became second-class citizens or dimmi under Islam. They were allowed to stay alive if they did not want to convert to Islam, but they had to pay the jizya or the protection tax in order to stay alive as a sign of their humiliation. So in a ceremony once a month, the Jews and the Christians would gather downtown and the Jew had to kneel on his knees and hand his jizya, whatever the goods were, the taxes that he was handing to the mullah in his hand. And the mullah would grab the Jew by his beard and hit him on his chin as a reminder of his subjugation and he would take his money. And in many areas, Jews and Christians were given a necklace, a receipt to wear to show that they have paid their protection tax and as a sign of their humiliation. Jews and Christians were not allowed to build churches. The Jews were not allowed to blow their shofars. The Christians were not allowed to ring their church bells. They were not allowed to pray loud. They were only allowed to pray in their homes silently. The um, belt that you see Christians wear, you men who are wearing belts, that was an Islamic invention for Jews and Christians to identify them in their attire when they walk outside on the streets. The yellow star that many of you think that Hitler invented to identify the Jews, the yellow star was an invention by the second Khalif of Iraq in the 900, Khalif al-Mutawakkil, who developed the yellow star for Jews to identify them as they walked down the street, which Hitler later copied 1,000 years later and duplicated in Germany. This was not a Nazi invention. This was an Islamic invention. By 1090, the Pope in Europe called upon the Christians because the Muslims have even conquered Jerusalem and they were subjugating the Christians in the holy city of Jerusalem, the birth of Christ. And the Pope in Europe told the Christians, how could you sit silently in Europe while watching what the Muslims were doing to your brethren in the Holy Land? And this is when the crusaders were launched. The crusades were not launched because all of a sudden they woke up one morning and they decided we're going to go kill a bunch of people because we decided to spread Christianity. The crusaders were launched as a response to Islam in order to go defend and protect Christians who were subjugated under Islam and to liberate the city of Jerusalem. And the crusaders were able to liberate Jerusalem for less than 100 years before Saladin went back and conquered Jerusalem and took it, captured it to Islamic land and continued subjugating the Christians. And Jerusalem uh, continued being controlled under Islamic land until 1967 when the state of Israel liberated Jerusalem where for the first time Christians and Jews in centuries were able to worship in the old city of Jerusalem together uniting the city as one. The crusaders... The crusaders fought Islam for 300 years and failed miserably. They could not win against Islam. And by the 1300s, the crusaders gave up and dissipated and went away. And Islam continued to grow. It grew out of the Middle East. It went into China. It conquered Spain. It conquered parts of Italy, parts of Europe. And by the 1600s, Islam had covered more of the earth's surface than the Roman Empire did at its peak. 
And during that war and during that expansion, 280 million people died. 80 million Hindus were butchered under Islam when Islam conquered India and the, and the Indian continent. Because under Islam, only Jews and Christians were protected dhimmis allowed to stay alive if they did not convert to Islam. And they were allowed to stay alive when they paid the jizya. Any other group of people who were not the people of the book either had to convert or die. They were not allowed to pay the jizya. By the 1600s, Christian Europe was becoming more industrial. The industrial revolution in Europe had begun. Europeans figured out a way to create factory lines where, able, where people were able to stand on lines and manufacture products. That gave the Europeans, Christian Europe, the money and the wealth and the power in order to finance armies, create armies, and develop weaponry, and launch attacks against Muslim occupiers in order to liberate Christian land conquered by Islam. They were able to liberate Spain. They were able to liberate parts of Italy. They went back to liberated parts of France. They were able to stop the Muslims at the gates of Vienna. And as Christian Europe liberated lands that was occupied by Islam, Islamic countries, the Islam started to shrink worldwide. And Muslims began to lose financing that they used to get from the Christians and the Jews who created wealth to the Muslims by working and paying the jizya. So as more Christian and Jewish lands were liberated, where tribes did not have to pay the jizya, Muslims started getting defeated and started getting poorer and poorer because they did not have the ability to develop products like the Europeans. And 400 years later, in 1924, the Islamic empire ended in Turkey by President Ataturk, who ended the Islamic empire and gave women rights to vote, gave women rights to get an education, gave women the right to choose over their lives who they want to marry, gave women the right to choose whether they want to cover with a hijab or not. The Muslims called him the Jewish agent. They accused him of having a Jewish mother because he ended, he was the kiss of death of the Muslim empire. The Islamic empire ended less than 100 years ago. Less than 100 years ago. Isn't it amazing how little we know of history? It is shocking. So, as Ataturk ended the Islamic Empire in 1924, in 1928, a group of devout Muslims looked around and they said to themselves, Islam is superior to any other religion. Islam had conquered many nations and covered most of the earth for 1400 years. Islam prospered because we subjugated Christians and Jews and any other land. And we did that through jihad, military war, in conquering the infidels according to the commandments of the Quran. And the Muslim Brotherhood was launched in Egypt five years later after the Islamic empire ended in 1928 in order to usher in the new era of Islam, revive the Islamic empire and conquer the West and Western civilization because they believed Western civilization was subjugating Islam. The Muslim Brotherhood is the mothership that was launched where what we call today radical Islam. The Muslim Brotherhood has 70 offshoot terrorist organizations spread throughout the world. Al-Qaeda and Hamas are an outburst are an, of the Muslim Brotherhood. Ayman al-Zawahiri, the second man of Al-Qaeda, was a leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. So, those who tell you that radical Islam today is just little extremists because they are upset with us because of our foreign policy need to learn history in order to understand why radical Islam is on the march today. What they are trying to do is take back what they believe was rightfully theirs.